Hi everybody, John Bailey, gemstone artist and founder of the Faceting Academy. Welcome back to the studio and to another installment in the official Facetron series of faceting videos. It's sponsored by the Jarvie Tool Company, makers of the Facetron faceting instrument that we're going to be working with here in a few minutes. Today we're going to talk about blueprinting. And blueprinting is just taking any equipment of any kind that has factory specifications and then hand fitting the parts that work together on that instrument, hand fitting those to an even higher level of precision than was provided at the factory. Uh, our fastening instrument manufacturers today, all the modern fastening equipment manufacturers make really nice equipment to really very high standards. And likewise with most of the manufacturers of laps, they're pretty doggone good. But we can take them just that little bit extra in the studio. That'll allow us to cut faster, easier, and with greater precision, faster and easier. So today we're going to show exactly how that process is done. It's not that hard. It's something that we do in the first couple of days at the Fastening Academy. We do this with all of our laps, and now you're going to be able to do it at home so you can have higher precision. Come on over and check it out. Here at the Facetron, preparing to do our blueprinting process, we're going to lay out all the tools and things that we need to do the process so we don't have to go on a scavenger hunt halfway through. We're going to use our table adapter, our 45 degree table adapter. We're going to use our lap nut, our quill key, a sharpie pen. We're going to need some uh, alcohol. This is 99% isopropyl alcohol that I keep in a spray bottle so it's handy. A little tissue might be useful. We're going to have a plastic quarter inch diameter rod this is just the size of a dop, and I turned this one out of Delrin, but you can use anything, any kind of plastic. You just don't want to be using metal because we're going to be putting it against the platen, which is aluminum, and it's soft. <clears throat> so we don't, want to, we don't want to damage, we don't want to use anything that can damage or scratch or ding or mar our platen. So plastic is a good idea. We've got the lap that we're going to be blueprinting. This is a, a brand new Crystallite 600. I'm going to unwrap it for the first time and we're going to set it up because we're going to be cutting some kunzite later. We might also need some sandpaper. This is 120 grit. You can use 120 or 220 if you have to. And a nice flat uh, block for sanding. We hope we don't need this. We usually don't. <clears throat> it's just nice to have it handy in case we do. There are a number of different ways to hand fit high precision components in order to achieve extra high precision outcomes. People with access to high-end metrology equipment might be inclined to use those resources to achieve these ends. Because most faceters don't have these resources or don't have them readily at hand, we're going to stick to resources that any faceter has lying around in their shop, including their time, attention, and care. Realize that this strategy will make the process a little less straightforward and a lot more time-consuming than might be possible if you were an engineer. I will promise you that like everything else in faceting, a lot of patience and care invested in the early stages pays great dividends in the enjoyment and speed and productivity that you'll realize on the other end. One of the first things I like to do in blueprinting is to go ahead and just take the splash pan off of the fastening instrument. It's going to get in the way. It's going to make it hard to see. So I just take the splash pan off and just put it to the side. I do make sure that we're going to continue to use our uh, rags, so something to protect the deck. Anytime we're handling anything over the deck, always use something to protect it in case you drop a tool. You could drop your 45 adapter or something and damage the deck. So always a good idea to have some padding. To prepare a fastening instrument for the blueprinting process, we're going to go ahead and take our mast protector, just take it off so it's out of the way as well. We're going to set our protractor at 45 degrees. because we're going to be using the 45 degree angle adapter. So zero the cheater, double check that you're on your 96 index and that everything's locked up nice and snugly. Don't want any rattles. Make sure everything's firm. Take our plastic dop and seat it in our 45 adapter. <coughs> We're going to seat the 45 adapter in the quill. It's 
snug it nicely, make sure it's out of the way. And we're just about ready to work. Let's take a closer look. Let's zoom in a little bit. The basic blueprinting process is about finding the highest spot on the platen and the highest spot on the lap and then marking both of those so we can consistently align them when we mount the lap to place the highest spot on the lap opposite the highest spot on the platen. That way we create a much flatter and more true and smooth running faceting surface. The first step in the blueprinting process is to find the highest spot on our platen. Although the platen is machined to very high tolerances and it should be extremely flat, no machining process is absolutely perfect and we are going to go beyond high precision factory tolerances. That's why they call it blueprinting. This is the, the process that we do to exceed factory tolerances and get to race car Indianapolis 500 standards. So we're going to be looking for the highest spot here and we're going to use our instrument to do it. The first step in that process is to make sure that the platen is extremely clean. You don't want any dirt, grit, grease or anything on there interfering with your measuring. So I use a little spray alcohol and a tissue, run the machine at slow speed and just wipe the platen very carefully. Make sure it's very clean. Once you're sure it's clean, we want to make sure that there are no dents, dings, or scratches, no imperfections in the surface of the platen. Because your fingers can detect smaller imperfections than your eyes might pick up, the easy way to do this is either to run the machine on very slow speed or just to drag your fingers around the platen. This is a process that should be done every time before you mount a lap, by the way, because you don't want any small piece, little chip of quartz or something there to be mashed into the platen. That'll cause you all sorts of headaches. So this process is something you should do anyway. Wipe the platen with your fingers, make sure it's clean, no chips, no dents, no dings. Now that we have a clean platen, we need to measure the highest spot. We've set up our protractor with a hard stop at 45 degrees. We've got our table adapter and a plastic dop. Always use plastic here, no metal, no brass dops. If you use brass, brass is harder than aluminum, you'll scratch your platen and that's not good. Just find a piece of plastic. I set the height of the mast up so that our dop is slightly above the platen. We can't make contact with it yet. I'm going to control this with my left hand the same way I would do faceting and I'm going to turn the platen on at slow speed. I'm going to operate the micrometer on the mast with my right hand, lowering it slowly until we first begin to hear the dop make contact with the platen. We place the microphone right next to the platen, so you should be able to hear it when it begins to make contact. It's making contact all the way around. We're going to raise it slightly until that contact is only momentary. You should be able to hear that the contact is momentary. Once you've got the contact momentary, turn off the platen. and change hands. Now I'm going to turn the platen, my left hand, until I can just feel it begin to make contact. I'm going to mark the beginning of that contact on the outer edge of the platen with my Sharpie. And then I'm going to slide it until I feel it break contact. So the highest spot on the platen is between these two marks and this is about one-third of a rotation. That's pretty typical of our first attempt at measuring. But now I know that we're somewhere between those two marks is going to be our highest spot. Now we get down close with the ear and feel very carefully with the fingertips. If 
you're not sure whether you're making contact, you can always scrub back and forth. And see if you get a little squeak, the plastic against the top of the platen. There's our contact. So we're getting a little bit more. I'm going to use the mask micrometer and I'm going to go up one of the tiny little hash marks on that micrometer and try again. That's the spot where I first started to touch. So now we're between those marks. Ease that micrometer up a little at a time. Find your very strongest point of contact, the highest spot on the platen. And when you do, mark it all the way from the center all the way to the outside and down the outside. I also find it useful to mark the spindle so you can see it even when there's a lap on the platen. Take your tissue paper and your alcohol and erase the extra marks that you made. They come right off. Finding the high spot on the platen might be very challenging because they are machined to very high precision standards. Use a very light touch, make sure your hard stop is engaged, be very patient with yourself and very careful with your sensitivity in your fingers and your listening and eventually you'll find it. It just does take some practice. Once we found and marked the high spot on the platen, we're ready for step number two. We're going to take our lap and mount it to the platen. We're going to check the bottom of the lap in the same way we check the platen by feel. Make sure that there's no dents, dings, scratches, crumbs, or eyelashes on there because any tiny thing is going to really screw up our process. We're just going to mount the lap carefully to the platen, snug it down, then we're going to bring, position our head so that our plastic top, when it's about one centimeter inside the edge of the lap, is at about that 4.30 or 5 o'clock position, same position that we used when we were checking the platen. Right now we're above the lap, we're not making contact, we're on a hard stop. We're going to make sure that we're completely clear of the lap, we have no contact all the way around, and then we're going to run it at slow speed and lower very slowly until we make our very first contact. As soon as it touches at all, there's a little tick, we turn our machine off. Then we're going to rotate by hand. That's our initial contact. And it's about a quarter of a turn on the lap is about when we're making contact. We try again. This is where I start to make contact. We 
with a light touch, that's really the highest spot right there. We're going to sweep because you can have variations in the radius of the lab. You can have a little extra plating or something like that. So we're going to sweep as if we were faceting. Rotate the lap. Aren't quite making contact. Super light. If I add just a little pressure. I can get a little contact in this area. So this is where we're going to mark our initial test mark for our first discovery of high spot. Now we release the lap and rotate the platen so the marked high spot on the platen is now opposite the marked high spot on the lap. And then we'll just mate them again. This is one of the reasons we really like to mark our spindle because I can see the high side of the spindle without taking the lap completely off the machine. We'll snug it down again and we'll test again. finding a little high area right here. Let's see where that is compared to our earlier mark. Our earlier mark was here. So probably somewhere between them is actually the highest spot. We're going to test off the one we just found. We'll go ahead and mark it. Two hash marks for second spot. And we're going to rotate that spot just a little bit towards I'm sorry, a little bit away from this high spot. Just a little away from it. Snug it down again and try again. This is the process of hand fitting, hand balancing. This is the reason that the factories don't ship laps pre-blueprinted because it takes this kind of time and trouble to do the process. The closer you get to correct, the wider the high spot is going to seem. It'll seem like it's getting worse. <laughs> Uh, what you're actually doing is spreading the error out. So I'm now finding contact almost all the way around. With very little difference. I've got almost half the lap now making contact. The highest area seems about here. I mark that just with my finger, compare it to the mark on the spindle, and it's high side to high side. So we're probably getting close to just our spindle, our platen. Yeah, take a little bit of a look. I'm going to rotate this just a little bit more, just about there. And I think this is probably going to be about the best that we can do. We're probably going to have a super, super flat running lap. Tiny adjustment on the head.
There's almost no spot that's higher than another. If we weren't able to do this, we might, if we had a really aggressively high area on the lap, we might go to the bottom of the lap where it contacts the platen on that particular lap and do a little bit of sanding. In this case, it's not necessary. I'm going to show you how we would do that just in case. So, so we go ahead and get this thing marked right. We're going to erase the marks on the edge of the lap. We're going to find out where our high mark is on the spindle. It's right here on the spindle. We want to mark the opposite of that because we want the high side of the lap. And that way when we mount, we're always mounting high mark, opposite high mark. So there's our high mark, and we're going to make a um, high mark on the label and a high mark at the edge of the lap. If these are opposite each other, we're always going to be truly aligned. If for some reason this was a really bad lap and we needed to doctor it, we would mark it this way, high spot. We'd come to the bottom of that, and we would sand lightly across the high side of the lap, just lightly across about 50% of where it makes contact with the platen. Wash it very carefully, bring it back, and repeat the process. This can take some time. Blueprinting this lap probably took 10 or 15 minutes. This is what we do with race cars and other really high performance, high precision equipment. This lap will now run so incredibly true, there probably will be almost no needle bounce at all. And to test that out, just to see what it's going to look like, we're going to set everything up, take it back to a soft stop, and we'll bring the camera over, set it up on our dial indicator, and run a couple of revolutions, and watch just how flat the lap is. So now we're going to run a test. We've got a soft stop set up, so we can travel past the zero. And we'll test just how flat now that we've blueprinted our lap, just how flat it will run, just how flat and smooth. We might get a little chatter because of the plastic, but we're just going to turn this lap right against the plastic and watch. Check out our dial indicator, and except for the chatter, the lap is running almost perfectly flat. See that? We'll do a zoom in shot on our dial indicator. That's what fastening is going to look like on this nice 600 lap now that we've blueprinted it. I hope you enjoyed this little video on blueprinting, and I hope you take the time and invest the attention and care to blueprint the laps that you use all the time. It will increase your performance, it will increase your productivity, and I hope your overall enjoyment of fastening. Thanks again to the Jarvie Company for sponsoring the video series, and if you happen to have any comments or questions, please use the Contact Me tab at the top of the page. I do my best to answer any questions that people have.